Welcome back. U.S. farmers were looking forward to seeing a resumption of buying from China for key agricultural products after that phase one deal was achieved between the U.S. and China. But it's now feared coronavirus could significantly delay that plan. Joining us for more is Al Kleiss. He's managing director at Kleiss Commodity Advisors. Al, thanks very much uh, for joining us. Uh, what, uh, what does the coronavirus outbreak uh, and all that uncertainty look like from the point of view of a U.S. farmer hoping that Chinese uh, purchasing was coming back into the picture? Yeah, it's, it's been a, a real big disappointment. First, we get the trade war going on for about 18 months. We get that resolved in December, and then January, February, we see the outbreak of Corona's uh, virus coming in, and it's really uh, taken a toll on food demand. I've seen reports that in areas of China, Japan, and now South Korea, 10 to 30 percent of the restaurants have closed. Many of these small restaurants are running out of money. And basically, when we're selling farm products, we're selling food. And if your consumers are not buying that, that's going to ultimately take it away. Uh, so far, the uh, Chinese have indicated they're going to be buying a lot more soybeans. But the indications have not come through in the marketplace. They've been buying a lot of soybeans, but because of the currency differential, they've been buying a lot of those soybeans out of Brazil. What about uh, the ability of small businesses in China to pay their bills at the end of the month? I know you've had something to say on that recently. Yeah, there is estimated that a third of the small businesses in China will not have enough cash on hand to pay their bills at the end of the month. If they can't pay their bills, they can't pay their rent. It's possible that the landowners that they're paying the rent checks to can't pay the banks, and that's just like a ripple effect, a domino effect right through the industry. So it's a situation that's pretty severe, and I'm concerned that some of the news and some of the uh, economic factors are going to get worse as we look into the first week of March. I'm hoping that the Bank of China, possibly even the European Central Bank in the U.S., the Fed, will have some type of liquidity event trying to help those businesses stay afloat. Are U.S. farmers still receiving any support, the kind of support that they were offered during the trade dispute? Uh, there's been three market facilitation payments, and if the phase one agreement is not honored, if we don't get to see a lot of soybeans going to China, there's some preliminary talks going on at the USDA about a possible market facilitation payment sometime in the first or second quarter of 2020. And when you look at some of the details of the phase one agreement, they said in the event of a natural disaster that China would have an out. And I, I'm not an attorney. I don't know if the, the coronavirus is a natural disaster. But so far, I would say the, uh, we're just not seeing the purchases that we had hoped for. What about uh, bigger picture, the reduced travel demand that we're seeing across the world uh, as uh, airlines uh, uh, shut down their travel or severely curtail their travel in that part of the world? Is that having uh, broader effects uh, that are felt at home by the U.S. farmer? Uh, especially the livestock sector. We send a lot of beef, a lot of pork uh, to the cruise industry. We send a lot of beef and pork into China and Hong Kong. And a lot of those shipments have really slowed or have just become non-existent uh, to the cruise industry and many of the markets in Hong Kong. They were hit initially with all the protests that really took a toll on their business. Now you don't have the Chinese tourists going into Hong Kong. So the restaurant trade has stopped or really slowed down, and that has really affected our beef and pork exports to some of those key markets. What about uh, farm inputs, uh, like uh, chemicals and fertilizers? How much of that material comes from China, and has there been a disruption there? Yeah, yes, there is. So far, we were a little bit ahead of the game, though. A lot of those inputs are actually shipped in the fall or in the early winter, and a lot of those inputs also come in from Canada. So I don't see any shortage of inputs developing for the spring of 2020, uh, but I'm very concerned about our price outlook for next year. Uh, USDA indicating we're going to have 94 million acres of corn in 2020 and 85 million acres of soybeans. And unless something really happens dramatically to reduce our crop supply, we're going to be looking at very, very large ending stocks a year from now. We often hear that markets don't like uncertainty. There's a great amount of uncertainty in this situation. How, how big a role is uncertainty having in the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the fortunes of U.S. farmers right now? Yeah, it, it's a big uh, it's a big factor right now. Uh, when you look at the current futures price, uh, new crop corn, the December 2020 corn futures making new contract lows yesterday. The November 20 and November 2021 soybean futures making new contract lows. When you 
plant your crop typically you like to be pricing 30 50 percent of it ahead to make sure that you can make your fall payments right now when you look at the fall prices you're a 10 to 15 percent below the cost of production for most farms if it's a, a leveraged farm with someone who has a fair amount of land debt or is paying high cash rent a lot of those new crop bids are 20 25 percent below producers cost of production so uh, it's it's a big concern not only for the farmer but for the people that work with farm businesses and for the lenders that lend money to farmers this is usually the time of year when we are looking forward to the spring planting season and uh, the weather in north america is the weather outlook less important or more important given all this uncertainty uh, it, it's very still very important uh, you know one thing you need, need to do as a farmer is to try to do everything you can to optimize your yields try to get the biggest crop you can uh, that ultimately creates surplus but for the individual farmers you're hoping the first step in that successful year would be to get the crops planted on time right now in the northern plains we've got a lot of snow cover uh, a really high probability that we're going to see some flooding especially from the areas of western minnesota up to winnipeg that red river valley is probably going to be seeing some planting delays the weather forecast that i show looks pretty good for planting season for the central corn belt however the delta and eastern corn belt haven't been very wet and our forecast have very wet delayed planting again in 2020. Al, thanks a lot for an interesting conversation. Al Kleiss is Managing Director at Kleiss Commodity Advisors. Thanks, Al.